Hi friends, uh, this is a course on risk-based engineering and uh, for this week the topic is uh, human reliability. Um, four lectures are over and uh, we have discussed the fundamentals of uh, human reliability, then uh, human reliability methods um, at international level that are available to us. Uh, then we very, very critically evaluated uh, their power, that is advantage and limitations. And uh, most of the approaches, they were developed somewhere in 80s um, and uh, a few, uh, one or two, uh, they were developed uh, somewhere in uh, close to 90 plus uh, year. So uh, it, is, it is really um, expected that uh, the, the uh, human reliability methodology should come in line with the present uh, data that is available to us from operation experience and from other sources. And uh, tools and methods uh, like uh, we have now uh, fuzzy logic, probabilistic methods are also we have a very improved framework. And uh, then we have uh, additional sources, <coughs> you know, now the time has come that uh, whatever no knowledge that is available in our, uh, our uh, uh, books um, like uh, Vedas and all that, uh, where the very matured uh, science of consciousness was available uh, or even you can say philosophy was available. So uh, take inspiration from there and uh, try to develop uh, improved uh, reliability methods um, along with the whatever availability of data information science. We have now new technologies uh, that is uh, artificial intelligence. So given the background, I'll come to this topic that how AI uh, can reduce the chances of error uh, due to uh, availability of uh, this intelligent methods in control room of the plant, uh, which helps the operator in uh, emergency domain when its uh, cognitive efficiency goes down and there this AI uh, based methods, uh, they provide a support. Um, there are evidences of these methods being used actively uh, in different areas. Uh, we will discuss that later on. But today, uh, whatever uh, review was done and the limitation of the existing methodology and advantages which are available from the present uh, state of the art as well as our ancient knowledge, if we can integrate them, uh, we can develop a uh, improved human uh, reliability methodology, uh, not only framework, but it's a application in reducing the risk, uh, especially in uh, through probabilistic risk assessment methods and all. So uh, let us uh, come to the topic. We are to, uh, today going to discuss the CQB method, which is being developed uh, in Baba Atomic Research Center, uh, India. Uh, I was one of the active person uh, and I took the lead on this development of this methodology. So let us see uh, what are the potential benefit of this methodology, how far it can help and uh, um, make the system uh, from human uh, error point of view more safe uh, and then uh, a critical, perform a critical review of this methods also. So. Um, First, uh, uh, the outline of this uh, talk will will go through the very, uh, you can say, brisk uh, aspects of motivation, objective, why we are going to and scope of this methodology. Salient feature of CQB method, the CQB model, uh, because here we are claiming that we are, uh, this model is more fundamental compared to the other existing models. So let us see. Uh, how it helps in generalization and uh, you know uh, in terms of efficiency also and uh, the the uh, the cornerstone of this methodology is consideration of consciousness which was not there explicit, uh, explicitly in uh, the previous approaches and performance shaping factors a different approach has been adopted for uh, performance shaping factors 
And then there are some tools and methods have been developed uh, along with this methodology like human precursor uh, analysis methodology. Uh, then uh, we have this root cause, uh, human root cause, the way hardware root cause analysis is done. Uh, you know. And then uh, a small illustration or I would say discussion on this approach. So uh, as you can see the diagram uh, uh, figure on the here, uh, right here, the first we require a human model and the essence of human model is that at the level of brain uh, we have cognition, we, it is a well known fact, uh, but the cognition is supported by consciousness, so you have consciousness here and finally a decision about right or wrong uh, that is conscience and they, um, they, they interdepend or they have an uh, interrelationship and they have a bearing on each um, uh, other, other, other uh, you can say, events. So this is how this human model, uh, it work, work at the level of brain. Uh, and le let's see uh, how uh, the CQB, first of all, why CQB is required? Uh, all along we have been discussing that the present methodologies, they have uh, limitation in terms of uh, sort of a black, black box model, uh, sometimes we talk that uncertainty is a uh, uh, higher side to the extent that uh, often the data becomes uh, and our operating experiences that the yes uncertainty on, and it is it is uh, even though it is a fundamental principle of defense in depth uh, that is a conservative approach uh, but then the time has come that over conservatism uh, should be reduced uh, in the interest of uh, increasing reliability and safety. So these are the fundamental and then when we come to modeling level, uh, there is, a, uh, there is a, a need of a robust and uh, a first principle human, uh, uh, human model. First it is human model and then the first is uh, the uh, CQB framework, um, you know, so that uh, later on uh, these techniques uh, should not be tailored uh, to only probabilistic risk assessment, it can find, should find general application also for other critical safety critical system. So the objective has been that risk and uh, modeling is one aspect that is PRA, probabilistic risk assessment, but then it should support the design and operational challenges also. Like if I am having human precursor analysis, so that means precursor is basically use advanced warning of any incipient. Uh, failure or consequences. So if you have advanced modeling of human precursor on based on this human precursor framework, uh, an action can be initiated and uh, corrective measures can be applied. Similarly, root cause analysis, um, the present methodologies, they remain at the level of uh, lapse, mistakes and uh, error of cognition, uh, commissioning error of omission, uh, commission error of omission. I think there is a need to go, the way we go for hardware components, there is a need to go uh, further uh, dive down and try to understand the fundamental actual roots, you know. And uh, so with this, uh, uh, the scope of this remains, um, uh, remains uh, wide, uh, widespread, not to PRA or this thing. So first we do a review of the existing approaches so that we are in right direction and we are really contributing to the uh, gap areas. Uh, first principle approach of human model, we have seen so far that uh, there is no uh, fundamental human model that we are able to and the advantage will be that generalization will be better, you know, though it will be challenging also on one side, but uh, advantage is we can apply this thing to other, uh, other sectors also. And then uh, collect data because data is basically a, uh, one level of validation and at the same time it pro provides an input uh, in working out our data uh, input and then uh, performance shaping factors and then uh, one of the characteristic of uh, this uh, CQB approach is here we have this uh, the structural engineering model that is stress strength distribution model has been adopted uh, to uh, work out the performance shaping factor that is stress is mental stress uh, and then the strength is 
resilience built into the system uh, so that the uh, main machine uh, error can be reduced. Okay. Uh, and then I identify the core feature and demonstration of the approach. This is the first uh, phase of this uh, the, uh, uh, CQB modeling. And based on the data and model further consolidate, uh, develop even performance shaping factors. And third one will be final validation and verification uh, on, on, uh, in a simulator environment or uh, with actual data which is coming in, uh, you know, uh, from the plant specific sources. And the end objective will be that uh, move away from the, uh, from the, uh, rather uh, have at one stage the handbook approach, but finally develop a software environment for analysis of human liability. So it's a tall order. We are going in steps. I think first uh, phase uh, we have already, um, uh, like you know, though it was very challenging, but uh, we have come to some conclusion and our models are available as you will see in the uh, slides. So salient feature of CQB, um, here we bring out the basic uh, advantages over the previous approaches uh, and uh, how we are able to uh, resolve it, th those things we will see in the uh, next slides. So human model is from first principle. Uh, we have not uh, gone by a component based approach, we have gone by exclusively what makes human a human, uh, life component, then physiological component. So these kind of considerations have gone in psychological uh, this thing and consciousness supports all this at once. Then um, consideration of consciousness because uh, uh, there is no need to argue this point. Um, consciousness is fundamental to human existence or even, uh, even animal existence or even the plant existence. So at lower level, but yes, that is. So this is not an assumption. It is a sort of, uh, you know, uh, um, it is science that is available. Uh, it's, it is a different thing that uh, even today, uh, the experts, they are discussing uh, what is consciousness. But, um, my take is that you know enough science is available uh, on consciousness, whether from uh, ancient literature uh, and uh, whatever uh, whatever scientific methods that have been evolved, and further consolidation. Of course, uh, so uh, the science has spent science stream has spent only 30 to 40 years on consciousness, but there there was a uh, we can draw inspiration from the uh, spiritual side. Uh, I mean, especially Vedic literature and that really works for developing this CQB model and that's how consciousness come into the play to develop this model. Then human root cause analysis is one special feature, feature of this uh, assumption of approach. So uh, uh, assumption and postulations, the, these two aspects they remain part and parcel, parcel of CQB approach and the uh, science around those postulations or assumptions are being developed. Until that happens, a, a, a sensitivity analysis uh, will, uh, will, uh, will help us to consolidate or to the sensitivity of our model. And then a mathematical CQ, CQB model has been developed. Of course, it, is, uh, it has to be tested yet, but a preliminary analysis and results are available. This uh, figure uh, right here, uh, it shows uh, why, how cons, uh, consideration of consciousness uh, uh, pays rich dividend because uh, in this approach it has been considered that uh, consciousness is all pervading. So that means um, whether it is matter or this, uh, this thing but then for the purpose of this matter or living things uh, for the purpose of this study uh, we take only the, at the human level and then uh, we don't stop by saying that it remains at the le le uh, level of brain. Only in first phase we are considering this, uh, this particular postulation. Otherwise we think um, when, we, uh, when we have some event happening at international level uh, and that uh, it is international consciousness or conscience, uh, the perception changes and uh, that percolate down to national level consciousness and conscience. 
and that further goes down to institutional level and then at the individual level. So then uh, the regulatory uh, process, procedures and all these things they are coming to picture. So uh, here the advantage is we are able to uh, capture uh, safety as well as security um, so security aspects uh, when we are modeling. Uh, like if I talk about probabilistic risk assessment, uh, so it, uh, probabilistic safety risk assessment, probabilistic security risk assessment, both can be done, and its focus is human in both the things because security has also has become a uh, one of the major concern here. Now uh, let us see uh, what is the human model here. Here the human model is uh, it is connecting uh, from external object, then processing stimuli. That means our eyes, our ears, uh, nose, uh, uh, and uh, so we get the, uh, the idea of the surrounding, okay? And then it reaches at the level of brain, that is cognitive processing occurs, and then a switch like consciousness, uh, conscience, uh, what decision we should take based on the moral ethics and all that, and then action around this. So, and then the feedback goes, and further fine tuning. So, so this is actually human body, let us say, which has got a physical and conscious system. You can say spirit also, phys physiological and spiritual uh, aspect. And they are connected with the environment. Okay. So, uh, and here I use the universal consciousness. Okay. This is truly a uh, spiritual meaning. But if I take on scientific basis, we are connected with the surrounding environment by interaction through similes uh, and uh, all that. And uh, this goes on. So uh, we saw this uh, uh, human is a part of universal consciousness. It is a postulation I am telling you. Human comprises of two major components, physiological and conscious system. And then we have stimulus there. Uh, there is an interplay between brain and all and that brain consciousness. So if I say uh, in my next slide, I'll explicitly tell the meaning of how the stimulus become conscious stimulus, okay? And when they become conscious stimulus, the human factor definitely improves. In fact, consciousness is determining the stimulus efficiency. So, uh, and then we say CQ model, B model has been from, uh, generated from more fundamental uh, principles, okay? Um, as I said, the way we analyze hardware component, why not human also? Because from there only at the root level we'll find the root cause, what is the problem and uh, we will be able to, otherwise uh, we will be always in the realm of evidence-based or you know, response-based uh, methodology and all. Uh, what is happening at the level of uh, body, the way it hap anything happens, a crack emerges or a corrosion phenomena. Or, so that is at material level. So here also material and spirit level, uh, uh, spiritual level or spirit, what happens to the spirit or consciousness. And then we have this approach. And let us say if we consider the brain, uh, we have frontal lobe, which is responsible for, uh, for all the knowledge based task and all that. So this is the sort of a main control room, you can say front lobe side view and side view and front view uh, top view we have here and then parietal lobe where our soma or uh, somatic associator are there uh, where um, we we hear from various senses and uh, we respond and then occipital area that is uh, our vision and all they are processed on this screen temporal domain which houses the hearing capability and all and uh, and then there is a little detail of this. So as I was telling, somatory uh, that is motor association, it hap happens in this area. Primary motor cortex is responsible for this. And uh, uh, somesthetic cortex uh, is basically this area, interface area, and the somatic associators are there. So uh, visual perception, primary visual cortex, and primary auditory cortex. And then we have here a cerebellum. Which is, which is responsible for physical aspect like balancing and things like that. Uh, okay, so uh, at, at so far the concept has been that in current science that consciousness play out at the level of brain. So 
uh, we are extending at least in, until phase one, even though we have that you know, concept of universal consciousness, but universal consciousness and you know, uh, you know, at a physical level also. But we'll say that, okay, first our, uh, our target will be what is happening at the level of brains, neurons, uh, okay, and how they are interacting and all. And uh, then uh, how through the uh, nervous system, uh, which forms, uh, brain is the central element like a control room, and then a spinal cord, it, uh, it uh, provides a uh, track in engineering we call wiring to connect the whole body and uh, there those uh, signals are brought to the control room, again processed and sent, signals are sent. So similar thing uh, is happening here also, peripheral nervous system, uh, this is a spinal cord and then it is a peripheral nervous system, then peripheral nerves uh, and that's how the like a plant, uh, all the uh, signals they reach to the level of brain. Uh, the similarity color correct uh, stimulus they collect information from outside uh, and then uh, this this is how the plant or human body operates uh, and we have a living um, human body uh, due to consciousness so uh, this is basically a <coughs> uh, model of the human uh, just to say now once this model is available uh, we are able to uh, create a framework uh, where we can give a scientific treatment or you know statistical treatment uh, through a faulty approach uh, and if we have to take so spend some time here human model we have it is called reference human model because the first attempt is to de develop a uh, reference human model and detailing is a very time and resource coming exercise so we'll go later on but in phase was phase one this was there and this is there in my book then we have human, humans are made of matter and spirit. Spirit means consciousness or here and conscience, you know, because uh, uh, they are at material level, they are, they are, uh, they are not, uh, uh, you know, uh, reflected or felt, so, so like that. So matter is here, physical body, mind consciousness. The, when the matter and my, mind, uh, they interact, they, it is called mind consciousness. And then internal uh, central nervous system is one way. And then external is uh, sense, uh, sensing of uh, or acquiring knowledge and that is through our stimulus and working action, hand, legs, so they are physical action. So sense and action, these two are happening here. And you see we, can, we are able to integrate even conscience that is ethical parameters, moral attitude, ethics into our hu human model. So uh, a common uh, visualization will say that this modeling is more uh, complete and holistic because the uh, right from spirit to matter and consciousness, conscience, they are covered. And this fault tree is almost like 10 to, or may, maybe 20 pages or 25 pages because all these branches have been developed over there and uh, for details can be found uh, in uh, my book on risk-based engineering by Prabhakar V. Varde and uh, Michael G. Pett from University of Maryland. <clears throat> so um, uh, so let, let, let us see how we translate this model, what we have done, various features and all that. So what we say is we are living till we are conscious. So that means we are interacting uh, with the outside world and then cognition is like a uh, consciousness, like, like a bias for the uh, cognition. Like for any electrical circuit, voltage is a bias, here it is a consciousness, but it has got much wider uh, 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 function and it is basically for explanation. Then we have sense bases. So the internal sense bases are like uh, eyes, ear, nose, mouth, body, and these are the entities for our interaction with the outside world. And uh, when it becomes uh, stimuli, for it become to stimuli, we have conscious seeing eyes function, conscious listening or hearing, conscious smell, then uh, mouth conscious speech or flavor, body conscious sensation and mind is conscious analysis or um, cognitive component of the human body. And these stimuli are judged down what is visible sound order uh, extra uh, we are getting from external objects. So they connect us to the external object and we get a feedback on this. So it goes to the level of brain, then perceptions are formed and this is a final switch, conscience, action, right, wrong, 
if it is all right then you we go ahead and we operate in a closed loop like this and from here uh, if uh, uh, if a uh, formation formation this action is happening in the closed loop in the same way formation is happening at the level of brain again and it goes into the closed loop and like that it operates so it we can say this is a very elegant way of looking at the uh, human model where we have stimuli uh, which are connecting to the outside world and uh, uh, we have sense bases which uh, sensitizes the stimuli and then uh, cognition they work and perceptions are formed and this perception they become the life force for us and uh, enabled or disabled by uh, conscience and we have action and that's how the, uh, we interact with the outside loop uh, so this is one of the fundamental uh, or you know uh, cornerstone of uh, cqb modeling cqb again i'll repeat consciousness cognition and conscience and operating at the level of brain so this is how it is so now let us look at it um, we are talking about consciousness but uh, how science takes it uh, uh, a, has a stake on consciousness so an experience of uh, uh, electroencephalography in our simulator room um, we gathered or uh, we, we developed various performance factors performance shaping factors and here the the beta factor model that is when a control room is charged with certain change in activities and that is where the uh, cognitive load are there on the human then this beta 3 the because the uh, electroencephalography it monitors the brain waves at the uh, Uh, at the level of brain and uh, different quantum uh, you know it is a mix of different waves generation so predominant waves are monitored so uh, uh, the science characterizes alpha alpha wave uh, um, up to uh, uh, you know uh, level of alpha wave between 8 to 12 hertz below that they are substitute level like in meditation when somebody is sitting alpha waves from 8 to 12 beta uh, has 12 to 30 38 and Uh, gamma uh, is 38 to 43 okay and then we have here beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 also so so we are in this region beta that is 12 to 38 and here it is 22 to 38 that is in between uh, region so what is happening at the level of brain conscious level that makes cognition loading when resource uh, as constant often aggravated by the, so this will be characterizing my uh, human Uh, mental stress level okay uh, because th- this is this is the uh, brain wave we are we are monitoring and here what is what is the resilience or built in provision into the system to handle those stress level so uh, a particularly force reactor uh, trip is uh, characterizing this uh, scenario okay so um, plant shut down a transient and that is characterizing our beta 3 activation and conditions require a higher quotient of knowledge base because in a very short time actions have to be taken in transient stage and uh, uh, a very little of the skill type so uh, one more fundamental concept in cqb is it is not uh, um, a skill alone rule alone or uh, knowledge alone it always operates on some mixed up these three or mixed up two it could be uh, you know, one also knowledge based but then there is no declaration that it is a uh, skill based task often it has been seen the even the skill based jobs at times they require a rule based approach or when it comes to some modification it requires a uh, it uh, a knowledge based approach also has been seen so uh, in a, in a particular accident situation if we see that even skills are very uh, are required and they require a knowledge based approach so a overlapping mechanism has been used uh, in uh, like in traditional approaches either it could be uh, rule, uh, skill based rule based or knowledge based there is no overlapping of these three but in uh, uh, cqb we consider it is better and uh, that required uh, a separate modeling approach uh, okay so Uh, that that's how it is and uh, in last slide i was discussing you what what is the re- resilience what is the stress on the operator and then our assumption that even 
mechanical engineering approach of structural engineering uh, can be can be used here uh, where operator stress which is measured at the level of brain sometimes we can characterize through our experience also and then uh, we have strength that is what is the built in provision so system resilience is characterized by the strength of design and operational provision process and procedures and response to stressful situations and operator stress is defined by qualitatively measured in simulator station operating experience and of course fuzzy modeling helps here and the operator stress uh, as i said uh, electroencephalography also can provide a uh, lot of data so which brings the whole thing into the mainstream uh, science uh, reason and here when they overlap the this reason like like a mechanical structural system a failure probability zone so that means there is a uh, so uh, what is the answer this stress when the systems are designed this uh, strength should be built and they should be explicitly uh, uh, away such that there is uh, there is a very little failure probability of course it is a random thing so there can be some overlap sometime but it should be sufficient gap should be maintained uh, so that will be still better than what we have this conservative factor of safety approach and all that so here it it works actually in this in that sense actually now again one more slide on stress strength whatever we have discussed so we have one accident condition and then uh, measured as part of stress so how stress characterization has been done evolution of handling of deviation transient and finally to an accident uh, uh, simulator statistics on human error and all this have been collected and from here a stress characterization has been done and what is the resilience or strength uh, thing which uh, uh, characterize what is the redundancy level at protection uh, system shutdown cooling and effect mechanism that means how is the inherent uh, how is the inherent system is healthier such that the available stress will not interfere with this and uh, these features they will take care they make this uh, system robust and in uh, present parlance we call uh, resilient the system is resilient to this kind of stresses and that's how the stress strength model has been found uh, you know uh, a very exciting option uh, to characterize uh, the uh, failure probability of uh, uh, at human level actually now uh, yeah this is just one example how uh, attributes can be translated excellent how it can is like fuzzy logic we are using so in fuzzy logic you have to have this linguistic uh, indicators and that we translate uh, into uh, into uh, various numerical parameters here very simply 1 1 2 3 4 have been given but uh, uh, that membership function it ranges from uh, 0 to 1 okay and then we'll say whether it is excellent uh, very good uh, uh, the, that itself is again a uh, subject but uh, sometimes triangular model uh, then trapezoidal model so different models are there they are used to model here we can understand if there is a approach to translate this linguistic term into quantitative term uh, and that should meet what we are trying to characterize over here you know so these two like bayesian updating can be done using these two inputs so uh, uh, now precursor uh, we discuss ki the one of the advantage in uh, cqb is uh, precursor analysis so what is uh, uh, the objective here objective is to keep monitoring the behavior of the of the uh, human or uh, operators uh, and uh, so and work out some indicators we'll see in next slide and how it is uh, affecting or how it is deteriorating and when action to be taken and what is the acceptance level and what is the rejection level that can be worked out so before any event like hardware for hardware we have a degradation mechanism and then uh, once it reaches the uh, limiting value Uh, then a failure can be expected and same thing that so now that science is moving from probabilistic probabilistic reliability to uh, instant of failure reliability you should have a peep into when is com component is going to fail with a acceptable uncertainty so uh, we we have human error precursor and then uh, concept is in line with prognostics and health management of hardware systems 
often the accident uh, negligence which happens negligence is a term uh, you don't know how to interpret it we we can say carelessness irresponsible uh, but then if we have to connect it to the uh, uh, psychological uh, terms and uh, that is where the point lies ki what how psychology changes and what what is lacking that is leading the uh, a human to perform the error and uh, and possibly to an accident also so uh, if we look at the human precursor index one is in innovation which is probabilistic safety assessment framework okay random failure and it is in intended so probabilistic security risk assessment so like um, concentration quotient cq focus quotient these are the term known to us situational quotient and uh, then uh, we have this uh, um, deactivation and uh, declarative quotient so all these things are there which got emerged from the inadvertent uh, behavior or random behavior and cognitive attrib attributes are intelligence memory and decision co uh, quotient and analytical quotient it can be expanded further but in phase 1 we are limiting ourselves to this one only and uh, here also we have honesty integrity quotient uh, integrity quotient and then uh, we have integrity quotient for morality and ethics actually so like that we have i think these terms are repeated we have to uh, correct it hq and in q okay so this will this particular block will be relating to ethics and this will be relating to um, morality okay so now uh, let us see um, so we have discussed uh, various aspects of cq cqb but there should be an integrated methodology and procedural step and how at every step of human reliability uh, the way other approaches have uh, what is the cqb um cqb attributes for every task that we are doing so like uh, we we take the uh, list of identified human errors so that will be related to uh, cognition component of this what are the um, and uh, then it we have to bifurcate it whether it is cognition responsible or weak cognition due to consciousness that is responsible for this human error and many more things and similarly definition of human error events so uh, it is better that we are when we are having definition there itself we define uh, what is the uh, what is the basic fundamental problem and what causing this in terms of uh, cqb framework uh, similarly characterization of event qualitative modeling data uh, also we should be very uh, conscious in using uh, data Uh, where the failure is really hardware hardware failure or some deep rooted human failure has uh, led to this one um, like uh, we say sometimes random failure when we are not able to understand the cause of the failure this is a terminology used uh, so similarly data also the data failure will say over stress under stress whatever but let us see what has gone wrong because when we say that uh, uh, the human component is involved uh, right from conceptual to design primary design final design operation maintenance so what is that component that was there and that we should correct so data also will be uh, screened out or screened in uh, quantification uncertainty characterization they form part of it okay so epistemic and alertic uncertainty and then sensitivity analysis because as long as uh, the uh, uh, principles of cqb comes firmly on scientific ground this uh, sensitivity analysis will be very important identification of major contributing factor is similar so everywhere cqb is not playing some uh, step will remain as it is and then plant uh, facility and then uh, event analysis and again the data goes into the level 1 pra again you find so it, it goes on into the loop every 3 uh, or 5 year the pra model is uh, updated and that's how it moves and uh, corrections and that's why that's how learning and model model also get, gets of uh, so this is a mathematical model of in cqb so as i was mentioning th there here the stress ratio sr is the key to this model and conscious uh, conscience 
uh, here uh, at present we have kept 0 or 1, other it is a ethical or non-ethical if some failure is taken place. One is it is highly unethical and 0 means no it is normal and we are treating only random variables. And then uh, it is a non-performance probability which we can estimate over here from here and then stress ratio uh, and uh, these coefficients are A and B over here. So, uh, P0, if you can see the, in this chart we have developed, it is 10 to the power minus 3. So, this data we got for the reference condition. Okay? And then A and uh, B, when we have B2, B is basically uh, training level. What is the training level of the person? Uh, and uh, A is complexity of job. So, when A is 1, that is that reference level, B2 is not something demand, demanded. So, here we get, we have this curve. And you can see like other curves, this curves also behave ten tending to uh, 1. Uh, okay. So, this stress ratio we have given up to 3. So, after up to 3 it was getting saturated. And these are our results. As I said uh, stress ratio for 1 minute it was 0.001, 1 into 10 to minus 3 that we got and we put here in this model. So, we can evaluate B, A and B other factor also and that is how uh, as on today, the uh, approach is usable uh, with discussion uh, and you know uh, detailed modeling uh, because uh, the finally we have to have converted into a, uh, a computer environment uh, tool. So that is job is going on. And uh, if you want to have anything more on this, my my book, uh, this is a human reliability is the one of the longest chapter, 60, 70 pages. So, what we have a conclusion, uh, CQP methodology phase 1 has been developed at Director Group BRC Mumbai. This has uh, already been published in a book entitled Risk Based Engineering, the, the subject book is here. Uh, it was published in 2018 and in fact, I uh, will add to this, uh, in 2023, my another book Risk Conscious Operation Management has been published and in that book also I have dealt with this subject, you know. Rather, we have expanded this subject actually. The, this work has already, uh, then the presentation on human reliability based on the above book. CQB has many and uh, many innovative features which includes fundamental human model, uh, which is inspired from Vedic books. Uh, consciousness has been considered fundamental, yes, and that is, it has to be like this only. Modeling of human precursor and uh, root cause analysis framework fault tree for root cause analysis and precursor for uh, as I had shown you in that uh, process chart. Uh, concept of overlapping cognitive coefficients, skill, rule and knowledge base and then stress ratio. These are the some salient feature. Phase 1 I think we have arrived and phase 2 and phase 3 has to be implemented. So, R&D work is. So, uh, one of the important insight from this uh, presentation is. Um, uh, it provides a template for R&D, how research and development has to be carried out, how available knowledge has to be used in terms of postulate assumptions and how uh, take those things as a reference and go on working um, and uh, see uh, how far the tool which we are developing is effective and uh, it uh, meets our requirement and uh, useful also. Thank you very much.